Today I'm taking and making two tropical meads. We have a Puna pineapple punch mead and a boar's blood punch as well. So let's get started. So I have in front of me these two little, they're empty now because I've used the contents of them, but they are basically flavoring, uh, I don't call them packets, but that's kind of what they are, of flavor th things. These are from Sean Harris, who is the owner of Wow Keeley Honey. They ship out of Hawaii. It's a beekeeper in Hawaii. You've probably seen his, his honey like this. This is the packaging he uses. This is him. He also sells these flavoring uh, concoctions, essentially. So I have two of them today. I have Boar's Blood Punch, which includes, and I'll show you all the stuff on screen, it includes dried raspberries, pomegranate, arils, rose hips, hibiscus, vanilla, and freeze-dried elderflower for that one. That's the Boar's Blood. In the Puna Punch Pineapple, or Puna Pineapple Punch, it includes white pineapple, freeze-dried white pineapple, I should say, pomegranate, arils, rose hips, hibiscus, vanilla, and elderflower, freeze-dried elderflower. These are freeze-dried or just, I mean, they could stay in a cabinet. They're not like something you have to put in the fridge, which is nice. He sells these alongside his honey, and he actually ended up sending me some these as a gift just because he's a super nice guy. Of course, with him sending them to me, I was like, well, I want to use them, so that's what I did. I started by making a large batch of tropical honey mead, or a traditional, essentially. So I'll show you a recipe card on screen, but the basis of these is real simple. They are intended to be added in secondary fermentation. It even says it on here. Brew pack for secondary fermentation. Both of these can get, or flavor, between three to five gallons. Obviously three gallons will be more powerful, five gallons, maybe a little less. To do this, we started by taking and making a traditional mead with tropical blossom honey. So we mixed up a bunch of honey and water and yeast from our card. If I remember correctly, these were about 1.080 or somewhere in that realm of starting gravity. We pitched our yeast, which was, uh, I don't remember, but it's on the card. We added some Fermade O at the 24 hour mark. So it was, this was a large batch of mead. This thing was about six or eight gallons, uh, actually eight gallons of mead um, in this big fermenter that I was going to split out when we get to secondary. So after starting the fermentation, we let it go for uh, two to three weeks. We saw it start to clear up. We then racked it out of that container and took a gravity reading. We're at 1.000 gravity, so that puts us at, a, I think, a 10% ABV. Because we're doing this for secondary fermentation, we went ahead and just added two different containers. We added each flavoring packet. So all of the Puna Punch, Pineapple Punch, into one of them. We mixed it around, make sure it was all mixed up. And the Boar's Blood into the other one. Simple as that, we just let it set for a little while longer. A little bit more fermentation because there is some sugars that come from some of these things like the, the fruit, dried fruit in here have a little bit of sugar content. So secondary fermentation. They sat for about, I wanna say a week and a half. That was my timeline. At that point, I wanted to decide if I, if I needed to back sweeten them. I ended up deciding to keep the pineapple punch as a dry mead, meaning I didn't back sweeten. I basically just racked it straight into a keg and we force carbonated it. You don't have to do the kegging side. I just thought carbonation would make this interesting. So we, we did that, it stayed dry, that's fine. The boar's blood, I did go ahead and back sweeten. So we went ahead, racked it into a new container off of the flavor packet stuff, stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, waited 24 hours to let those work, do their magic, and then we back sweetened with some honey. We got this one up to like 1.025 final gravity and let it clear the best it could. And then we went ahead and then kegged that one. So it was also carbonated. So we have a sweet and a dry. Now I want to specify, there are some instructions for how to brew with this. I'll let you read what it says on the screen, but essentially it talks about making a tea of this. And when you make the tea, add the ingredients along with it. So that's interesting. Now, did I do this wrong? Maybe, who knows? But this is how I did this with those flavorings. They sat in there. I did have to go and mix them up every couple days just to make sure that all those ingredients stayed, uh, I mean, stayed within the mead and there was nothing setting on top to mold. So both of these are carbonated. We're at a, a decently high ABB brew for both of them. I think it's time to go get a pour of each. So let's go get them. All 
All right, so I've got them both right here. And my left hand is the pineapple punch, and in my right hand is the boar's blood. They're both pretty carbonated. I don't know if you can see on there, but there's some bubbling occurring for both of them. Looking good. Like I said, the pineapple punch is dry. So, spoilers. You can always back sweeten if you want to. I just wanted to see what it would be like dry. So here it is, pineapple punch. Always refreshing. Carbonation and cold, that definitely helps. But that pineapple, I wanna say the warm side of the pineapple's present, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, with the dry factor, it definitely does not give a lot of fruit profile, doesn't um, uh, bolden, embolden, I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but help to pronounce sweetness from fruit. The other things in this one, the pomegranate, which is like some uh, darker note, rose hips, I'm also familiar with hibiscus, all of that adds to some herbally note. The vanilla is not as evident um, in the elderflower is something I'm not super familiar with. It's pretty good though. I think it'd be good still as well. I don't think you have to carbonate it. I just think it worked out to carbonate this one. And dry, honestly, I, I don't mind it. I think it's pretty good dry. I do think it'd be fun to back sweeten though with some more honey to see what would it do. So let's switch gears. We've done the pineapple punch. Let's go over to the boar's blood, which was again, dried raspberries, pomegranate, rose hips, hibiscus, vanilla, and elderflower. Yeah, woo, those raspberries. They had a little bit of tartness in there, even with some sweetness to support this. I think this one definitely has to be back sweetened because of the um, tartness of the raspberry. When those rose hips are more apparent here in the hibiscus, it's really pretty good though. Both of these, the carbonation and the lift that you have with that taste really good. And they're so easy. That's one thing I love about these two things is they were so easy. Make a traditional mead um, or you can ferment on it. You could do that. Add it in secondary if you want to do that or I guess primary. You then rack it into a new container and your mead is done. Or you can take next steps and stabilize or pasteurize and back sweeten. So I wanna give a big shout out to Sean because one, he's, he shared these things with me. Thank you, Sean, these are cool. I'll put a, a link to contact him. He does have a website, I think. So there's ways to contact him there, but it's easiest to get a hold of him on Instagram or Facebook or via email, I think, and see what he has. He has some really great honey. I've bought hundreds of pounds of honey from him at this point um, because it's just that good. And they do free shipping for the US if you're local, so that's pretty cool. I hope you've enjoyed this. Go check out Sean and his honey operation and also his other things. He does vanilla beans too. I, he sent me some of those. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious to use those. But regardless, try this, go make some mead, check out the channel for other recipe ideas. If you wanna try something different, hit the subscribe button while you're there and I'll see you in the future. Cheers.